What is up, guys? I am back with more Guilty Gear Strive. So today, we're going to be talking about Eno. Eno is a character that I've been enjoying quite a bit. Uh, she carried me all the way to floor 10 of the ranked towers on day one. I think she's extremely strong. But I have noticed she has a reputation for being kind of a complicated or difficult player. I've heard a lot of people say they were scared to try her because she's supposed to be hard. Uh, but today I thought I would go through some basic ideas that I think will get you started with the character really quickly and let you start racking up wins. And then as you get better, uh, you can apply more advanced stuff. But for now, we're going to be running through her game plan, some combos, some moves that you should be using a lot. And then I will show you a match or two at the end that will give you an example of what that looks like. Like in a real fight context so let's talk about Eno's basic strategy so you may know her ground dash if you dash on the ground she floats right this is her kind of her main gimmick this is what makes her different from all the other characters and it's kind of what makes her a little bit awkward to play when you're first starting out because you want to get close to the opponent but then you end up in the air and it starts to be kind of awkward but this is a very very strong move her core game plan, I would say, is this three-way mix-up of you're either going to go high. I would say jump slash is her best move to go high with. It's pretty easy to combo off of. Or you're going to go low. So you can either just dash and then let yourself land. Or if you use faultless defense, you actually land a little bit faster so you can get a fast low that way. Or the third part of the mix-up is you can just land and then throw. So that's your mix-up. Am I going to go high? Am I going to go low? Or am I going to go throw, right? So this is a pretty effective game plan. But first, you got to set it up. I would say the most consistent way to set up this mix-up is to get them to block her fireball. So quarter circle back plus punch throws this fireball. It's worth noting you can steer it up and down if you want to cover a specific angle. Something that I think is pretty good is if you steer it up and then you go in. The opponent won't be able to jump or else they'll have to block the fireball. So that will sit them still so that you can go in for pressure. But also, even more effective is if you can knock the opponent down with a sweep, you can cancel the sweep into the fireball so then they have to block it right when they get up and they're going to be in a perfect situation to get mixed up. You can also set up the fireball if you land chemical love, quarter circle back plus kick. Uh, this move, honestly, I feel is a little bit weak in this game. Uh, pretty much every character in the game can duck under this. A lot of characters, their running hitbox will also go under this. So I find a lot of times you do get punished if you just throw this move out. But it is good in certain matchups like Potemkin and Nagaryuki. Those characters kind of struggle at getting in against this. And, you know, anytime you land like a stray hit, you should be able to cancel into Chemical Love. And then you can set up a fireball when the opponent's getting up from that. So a really common play pattern that you're going to see in uh, Eno matches is, you know, you get a knockdown, you set up the fireball, you use that as an opportunity to go in, and then you start looping these sort of mix-up patterns where you can go high, you can go low, and then eventually you'll get like a wall break situation, which will get you a lot of damage and meter gain. Or if you want to cash in uh, meter for damage, a good way to do that is her command throw super. Half circle back, forward, plus heavy slash. I'm not sure if this is actually a command throw or if it's just an unblockable attack. But either way, if you are point blank upon the opponent and you do this, it is going to be unreactable. And uh, if they're not jumping, they are going to get thrown and it does a ton of damage. So this mix-up is really, really strong. The opponent's like, I don't know where to block. Which way are they going to go? High or low? And then you just throw them. So... That super is really, really good. Don't neglect it. I think it's one of her most powerful tools. And one of the things that, in my opinion, makes her seem really, really strong in this game. Her other super, by the way, half circle back forward plus slash. This super is really good, too. Uh, it is invincible on startup, so it will get you out of a lot, of a lot of bad situations. And it's safe on block, which is really good. But do note that the enemy can interrupt it. So after they block the first hit, it's going to be pretty easy for them to just hit you out of the second hit. So against opponents who know what they're doing, you can't just throw this out willy-nilly. But sometimes you will get a situation where they just end up blocking the second hit and you're safe. Not much they can do there. So a very good super as well. And there are some situations where you can combo into it, but the range is very short. So generally, I would say in combo situations, it's usually better to go for Roman cancel type stuff. Uh, that will generally be easier to confirm into and get you more corner carry and more meter build. 
So when it comes to combos, Eno's combos are generally really short in this game outside of some Roman cancel situations. But usually instead of doing long combos, your goal is to go for a knockdown and set up a mix up when the opponent is getting up. If you do want a more damaging combo off of like an overhead or something, you can do slash, crouching heavy slash into the slash version of stroke. And you can, of course, use Roman Cancel to get more damage off that, so that's pretty solid. I would say Stroke is generally a really good and kind of abusable move. Um, the Slash version of Stroke is going to be minus on block, but it's still very plus on hit. You can see the opponent can uh, shake out of the stagger by wiggling the stick and mashing, so this isn't a guaranteed combo. But it's still very plus on hit, and it hits low, so people get caught off guard by it. But Heavy Stroke is actually a really ridiculous move. Uh, a lot of times, that combo is going to be guaranteed after it hits. And it is quite plus on block, so if the opponent is pressing buttons after they block this, you should be able to get a nice counter hit on them. So this is just a very, very good move. It'll go under fireballs. It goes really, really far. It hits low, you can combo off it on hit, and it's plus on block, so this is probably her most abusable move. You can beat a lot of lower level players just by doing this. They won't realize that, you know, you're plus here, so they're not allowed to press buttons. The way to get out of this is obviously just to interrupt her when she's coming towards you. This move does have slow startup, but... Uh, yeah, the fact that that's plus, um, people will definitely get got by that. So if you're having trouble in neutral, especially against characters like Kai or Faust or something who are kind of keeping you far away, the uh, Heavy Slash version of Stroke can be very good to shortcut neutral and get in. Uh, for anti-airs, generally 6P is going to be your best anti-air with her. Uh, it does have upper body invincibility, and if you want, you can... Uh, Roman Cancel to get a combo off it, so it's a pretty solid move. Another pretty interesting move is her 6H. You can see there's a first hit that kind of hits close to her, and this does come out very fast, so you can do Crouching Kick into 6H, and uh, you can cancel it into Stroke to stay safe on block. And the second hit can work as an anti-air from pretty far away, so it's a pretty interesting move. Um, Generally, I would say this move is kind of scary to use because you can see there is such a long whiff when it whiffs, but it definitely has its uses and for like block strings and for combos it can be pretty useful as well. Uh, one final thing, if you want to add a, another layer of mix-up to uh, your dash pressure, instead of just going overhead, you can do double overhead by doing kick into dust. And then you can cancel that into her dive, and then you can roam and cancel that if you want to get a combo off it like that. Do note that the kick doesn't combo into the dust. Uh, you can see the combo counter doesn't come up. They can block the dust, but the whole point of this is that it's kind of a 50-50 whether you're going to land and go low or whether you're going to go with the second high. Also note that if you're really high off the ground, this won't work. So like if you're dashing from far away, you can see the second hit's not going to hit. It only works if you're pretty low to the ground. But if you are this far away, something you can do is actually slash and then air dash cancel it. And then you can do kick into dust on the way down from that. And this does come up like if you get a knockdown from like far away. Being able to get that second and third overhead can be really big in that situation, so definitely something to watch out for. But uh, with that, that's basically all I got to tell you for now. I uh, hope you found this informative and stick around because I'm going to be showing you some matches with Eno where you'll get to see some of this mix in action. She's an awesome character. If you've been trying her out, let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, yeah, let me know what character you like to see me cover next and stick around and enjoy the match footage, guys. Thank you for watching. Damn, damn, damn! Yikes! Zoink, Scoob! This is not good. Bro, the blender on this character. Okay, well, somehow the throw whiffed, but I, I still killed. 
Yeah, I like team fighting games a lot too. Assists add such an extra dimension, but I think for newcomers, one-on-one -on -one is better because you have to learn fewer characters. I think there are a lot of new players that literally like won't buy a 3v3 game. Going for super there. No. No. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't played Marvel 3 EX. It looks cool. Blender. Uh, I think this might be a new skin. There's a bunch of skins that were not in the beta. It's a cool one. Yeah, this game on a cabinet would be sick. That would be so godlike. Except the only problem is the button config would probably be weird. <laughs> I feel like everybody plays on different button configs in this game. Hey, Relight, thank you very much for the Prime sub. I highly, highly appreciate it. Oh god. Oh god. Damn, two minus there. Woo! Dusto. Nice confirm. What the heck? Is that legal? Oh no, I'm so dead. I'm saving burst this round. <laughs> Unless... actually brought it all the way back boys this character is insane man so fun Eno wins Eno wins all right let's go let's go let's go There we go. My plus frames. Doesn't matter. Dual 
Robokai got a new head model? Wait, what does that mean? In the story mode? Didn't all the characters get new models in the story mode? Runners up for my main. Besides Eno, I don't know, to be honest. Probably need to try more. Giovanna's cool, but I'm just kind of tired of her. Yeah, there's no gameplay in story mode, it's just cutscenes. But there are, there is story in the arcade mode. So, similar to Exert, if you want the whole story, you have to play everyone's arcade mode. Bro. Why is this not going so well? Did this guy pass off the controller? Unblockable. Do I understand the Guilty Gear lore? I would say, holy cow, that killed! Who cares about the lore, man? Why did that do so much? <gasps> With the wall break and everything? Good lord! Whew. Whew. 